those of you that just came in, we've been doing a teaching on demons. And we had to start before your coming. And we would like to ask that you pick. We have three other t three tips, three sessions that we have held before this time because of the vast nature of the emphasis. And the emphasis is so critical. Hallelujah. The emphasis is what? Is so critical that even though we intended to major on a different emphasis, the Lord will not allow us. And we had to come back to the subject of demons and how to handle them. Now, I'm just coming from a crusade in Lafia. And when we got into the city, my spiritual radar began to operate. And the instruction that came was that we should not go to the hotel before we go to the, for the crusade. Hallelujah. And any time there is an instruction like that, it means there is crisis. There is crisis that needs attention. And when we got to the place, because I know the drill, I know that kind of drill. The assignment was to sit down and begin to speak in tongues. After speaking in tongues for about one hour, 30 minutes, then the organizer of the event now say, Now we is cleared, we are under attack. We, we went through that situation and God's glory manifested in a strange way. I've been to cities before in different nations. And you will see demons at work. I am here to educate us and after the education, you will be instructed as to how to handle these undesirable elements in the name of Jesus. In our study, we were able to establish that demons are persons without bodies. That's the most classical definition of who a demon is. It's a person without bodies. Persons without bodies. You know, in our study, we uh, realize that demons have the ability to speak to speak. They can speak. They have knowledge. They were able to... Uh, the, the guy that was possessed of the devils in the book of Mark chapter 1 that Jesus ministered to, the demons cried for him from he, uh, through his vocal cord and said, we know who thou art. They are not just with the ability to communicate, to talk. They also have access to the a data bank of knowledge you have access to a data bank of knowledge the third thing was that they were able to recognize jesus the holy one of god they had the intelligence sufficient for recognition when you are dealing with demons you are dealing with intelligent beings very intelligent beings and if you are dealing with an intelligent being, you must know that you will need a superior intelligence in dealing with these beings. The fourth thing we were able to establish was that demons have the ability to influence the condition of human beings. The woman that was bowed down for 18 years, according to the Lord, because he gave us a report having designed the situation and in his report he captured that what was responsible was a spirit of infirmity. It means that there was a demon that was there for 18 years. It didn't change its job description. The, 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 the um, function of the demon was to ensure that the woman was kept bowed. That suggests that demons can be very consistent and very faithful in their endeavors. Very consistent and very, very faithful in their endeavors. So we saw that previously. We were able to also see how that the threefold agenda for demons 
is number one to ensure that you never meet the Lord. Number two, to ensure that if you have met the Lord, you will not serve him. And number three, if you have met the Lord and probably have begun to serve him, you should never know the Holy Spirit. Threefold agenda. Are you with me? And then we were able to establish some other things in the three sessions that we have had before this time. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. I began to study about demons from 2015. And the reason why I began to study about demons was because the Bible reveals that just like Jenny's and Jambres withstood Moses. That is in the same way that the truth is going to be withstood in the end times. Hallelujah. How did Janus and Jambres withstand Moses? It was supernaturally. So it means that the battle for the gospel, the battle for the truth of the kingdom is going to be fought on the platform of the supernatural. If Janice and Jambres could drop their staff and it became a serpent. Because that day the contest was not a function of physical might or verbal capacity. It was based on manifestation of the supernatural. Are you with me? Evangelist Uka made a statement that is from his wife. He said the reason why people seek satanic power is because we are designed to carry glory. And when there is no glory, <laughs> life is supernatural. And among all the things that Jesus said that his followers will be identified by, the first on the list was that they will have the capacity to cast out devils. It means that, are you with me? It means that we should be able to pick anybody randomly for the, from this congregation and that person should have an experience of how to expel devils. If the script we are working with is the script that Jesus gave us, then an average believer should be identified first and foremost by his ability to cast out devils. And the other day, I randomly picked a young man. I asked him, have you ever cast out a devil before? He said, oh yes. And while we tried to analyze the experience he claimed he had, for which he called casting out devils, we saw it had nothing to do with devils. That means we have not done a good job in educating believers in that regard. Two things I need to bring to our notice. Mark chapter 1. Please get the two other messages and just in case you are in a hurry, we will upload all the messages on this subject at the end of the conference. You can download it from our website or any of the platforms that is available. The Telegram platform, the website, all the other outlets will have these um, materials and it's for free, absolutely free. Nobody will demand any form of payment whatsoever. What we do is a labor for God and for the body of Christ so that our corporate rank ranking as a body territorially and nationally can increase to a point where we can bind the demons of the Niger that has kept our nation in captivity. May the Lord give you understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Mark chapter 1. I need to do a contrast and a comparison before we begin our journey. In Mark chapter 1, verse number 23, 
I would like to read. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. My emphasis for reading this scripture, my reason for reading it, is that the Bible says in verse 23 that the man was with an unclean spirit. He was what? With an unclean spirit. In the Greek, that whole stretch, with an unclean spirit, in the Greek is written diamond in Zomai. What diamond in Zomai means is demonized. Now, notice, are you with me? Notice. It's a journey. It's a journey that we can't finish this weekend. If the Lord permits, oh, we'll continue in next contact. If He yet permits, then we'll continue subsequently. We need four contacts to be able to handle this matter. Because if we go into this scripture, I was just in the room praying for direction in the office. What do you want me to say? Yes, I've studied, I've done that. What are you saying? What are you saying this evening? Just to find out from the, before I come back. You know, <laughs> if you study your Bible, your greatest challenge will not be an absence of what to preach, but what God is saying. So when you have finished doing your study, you have to go back to God and say, what are you saying? So what I am saying now is what he give, gave me the permission to say. And this is what he's saying. It means his anointing will be on it. He will bless it. It will become an instrument through which many will tap into grace. Yeah. Diamond in Somai means demonize. Okay, let me do the contrast. So that we can advance appropriately. Still in the book of Mark. Are you with me? Can you push to um, Mark chapter 5? Are you there in Mark chapter 5? Verse 1. And they came over unto the other side. Into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship. Immediately. They met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Can you see the same terminology? With what? And you know, the other case we mentioned is still with. You are not with me. But this case is not diamond in Zomai. This case is possession. See, there is a difference between demonization and possession. Because I know we have preachers of faith here. My great friend Habila Joshua, he, he, he was raised in the faith college. He's a faith man. So I know there are preachers of faith here. So I'm, I, I'm trying to balance my context, balance my delivery so that I will not be accosted by the preachers of faith in our midst. Hallelujah. Because, you know, I also was trained in the faith college, okay? So, hallelujah. Now, a, a believer cannot be possessed. Why? Because your spirit is a one-bedroom flat. It can only accommodate one occupant. So it's either that you are born again, and then being born again means you are possessed by God. He occupies that one bedroom flat. Are you with me? Unfortunately, your territory as an individual spans from your spirit, spans to your soul, and spans to your body. That's vast territory. Are you with me? 
And the territory of your spirit, just like I said, can only have one occupant. The word possess has a lot to do with ownership. Are you here? So you will notice the condition of the man in Mark chapter 5. Okay, let's read on. Let's read on. We have so much to do. So much to do. Before I started preaching about demons, I had to go to God. I said, Lord, okay, let me, let me leave that. Mark chapter 5. And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often, he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. That's fine. And always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying, and cutting himself with stones. The reason for which he was crying was because he didn't like his condition. Yes. Because even though he was possessed, he was not bereaved of his pure, stable consciousness. He still had that on. And then he noticed that there was something beyond his control. Beyond the control of his will that was responsible for his condition. For instance, he didn't want to cut himself with stones, but the position of his will was immaterial in this matter. In the case of possession, there is this, this, this reality of ownership. So it's the spirit that determines his bedside. And in this case, his bed place, as designated by the spirit, was among what? The tomb. His preferences didn't matter. Are you still with me? I'm just trying to show you a difference. And I've just established how that you will have territories in your soul. Your soul is more vast than any computer you have seen. Any computer. Not even the mainframe computers can match, stand by, side by side your soul. It's a vast island. Hallelujah. Now, those territories of your soul can also be harbingers, can be dwelling places for demonic activity. Now, when this man of Gadara was accosted by Jesus, I guess Jesus wanted us uh, to receive some form of education. And he asked him, what is your name? And the man said, my name is Legion. And legion is a Roman military terminology signifying a garrison of soldiers ranging from 2,000 soldiers to 12,000 soldiers. That is to say, in the least, what legion meant was that he was a harbinger for 2,000 demons. Now I'm just trying to let you know how vast the island called man is. It's a vast island. And it's only one occupant that can take possession of his spirit. But there are many other chambers that are available that demons can hang on. Are you here? Now I'm saying that you know this guy, the, other, the first guy, he was in the synagogue, he was in church. Okay. But you see, the, the, the situation of the man in church was that he was demonized. So a man can be in church and yet be what? Demonized. I'm just trying to, it's because of the faith preachers that I'm going this way, so that they won't say, ah, pastor. And it is because of that also I, I had to identify quickly that in training, I was trained from the faith college. So that I can identify with my training roots as much as possible. But this matter is not about roots, it's, this is scripture. And it took me 15, 2015 to 
date is how many years now? About five years. So a believer can't be born again and yet be demonized. Meanwhile, the guy that was demonized didn't manifest any symptom that suggested that he was not okay. He was a cool, calm, and collected fella. Probably he himself never knew there was anything hanging around. He still knew how to knot his tie. He still knew how to put on his belt. He, he was gorgeous. Oh, glory. <laughs> Only until he came for service and Jesus introduced something called fire. And fire began to destabilize his delicate balance. And then in the midst of the action, he cried. Are you still with me? All right, so. In one of the lectures, I began to show us the platforms. The platforms from whence the devil. I can, are you with me? Are you with me? Uh, so I want to show you the situation because 90% of us, 90% of us in this conference are born again. So my emphasis will be on the demonized case much more than the possessed case. And we will need to touch the process case because all of us here are ministers. So that you, <laughs> you'll be able to identify how to help a man that is actually possessed. It's a different ball game. How many of you were there when we did the crusade? And I was about to go into my car, the last crusade we had. And then there was a man that charged at me. Hoping to do me some harm, so I now, so at least if you are going to kill me, let me face you, so that you can see me and identify that it's not my wife you are looking for, it's me you are looking for. So when he looked upon me, he fell off. Hallelujah. He was not in control of his actions. But the moment I approached him to, to help him expel the demons, suddenly he began to speak. But I know you, I followed you in Lagos for seven years. A man in Makodi knows my whereabouts in Lagos and he was very accurate. That one is possessed. All right, so there's a way to handle that. And meanwhile, if you are going to come into the deliverance ministry, just like, okay, we also established that Jesus is the first impact that Jesus made in ministry was in his ability to cast out them. First impact. So if we are saying that Jesus is our example, if we are saying that the apostles are our example, then the, in, at, in fact, Jesus' definition of preach is teach about the kingdom and cast out devils. That's what preach means. Because there was no time in scripture that the scripture used the word preach that demons were not casted. It was only when Jesus taught hmm, that he could teach without casting devils. But if he preached, evangelist, you are a preacher. That thing you do, called preaching, the consummation of it is to cast out devils. There was no body in the entire scripture that Jesus sent forth to do evangelical work that was not competent in casting out devils. Are you with me? Yes, Should I come again? Amen. The word preach is consummated in what? Casting out devils. The word teach. Huh? Teach. You know that word now? How many of you still remember what Nicodemus said? We know that thou art the teacher come from God because no one can do this miracle. Yeah. The word teach should consummate in miracle. And the word teach, preach, should what? Consummate in what? Casting out devils. So there was no time in scripture. And I challenge you to study. There was no time in scripture that the word preach was used with Jesus that didn't end up in what? Demons being casted out. If it is true. Because you see, there is a serious temptation. To make all of us migrate from preaching the gospel to start serving people with positive thinking. There is a serious temptation right now. 
part of our function as ministers in the middle belt is to maintain the apostolic balance. This is where the purest form of Christianity as ordained by God will be found in the middle belt. I'm telling you prophetically. It's part of our job. If, you, if we know what we are called to do in the body at all, because every territory has an emphasis, but we is the preservation of the pure apostolic gospel that is our heritage. Because you will know that if you are not aware, Joss happens to be the headquarters of Christianity in Nigeria. So there's this subtle intent to ensure that we migrate from preaching the gospel. Because the gospel is, is a kingdom message. The gospel is a kingdom message. And there is a serious temptation to migrate from preaching the gospel to end up in doing positive thinking. And so part of the things you need in order for your uh, church or fellowship to be a wonderful center for positive thinking is that the colors are well blended. You know, there should be no color riot in the environment. There should be natural balance. And then the preacher is well uh, dressed, looking simply panache. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Our definition of excellence is up for scrutiny. Because, hallelujah. Because when the Bible says that an excellent spirit was upon Daniel, what the excellent spirit did was not to blend colors. The, first, the best blender of colors today are gay people. Gay. Have you seen the, mat, the rainbow? The rainbow people. They blend colors more than have any set of people on it. The excellent spirit that was upon Daniel gave him the capacity to explain hard sentences. The experience, excellent spirit that was upon Daniel gave him the capacity to dissolve doubts. Just in case you came in with doubt, when Daniel manifests what he does, you will no longer have doubt. The spirit that was upon Daniel could uncover anything that was hidden. And so just in case you need to hide your ATM number, just in case you need to hide your BVN, you can't hide it from Daniel. Because the Bible says light and understanding was given unto him. And the definition of light according to scripture is that which makes manifest. You don't want your B BVN in the public. That's why it's not published on newspaper. You conceal it. But light does what makes manifest. That was what was upon Daniel. You could not hide a secret in a writing, in a language, even if it's a language of cherubims. Daniel can read it because light and understanding. That was the spirit of excellence at work. It was not blending colors. Oh, Jesus. Well, God will help us. <laughs> Meanwhile, the worship place will not be shabby. But that's not why we are here. Whether it is in a bacha, glory can be in a manger. So, hallelujah. May the Lord give you understanding. Now, the reason why I said that is that we need to fight for apostolic Christianity. In fact, some people declined inviting me for a conference, and the reason was they called me to stop using two words. The first one was demon. And I'll be speaking nice, nice for some time. Then I'll now mention what? Then their heart will break. My response is that I'm not aspiring to be a part of your clique or your club. I am not a preacher. I'm a messenger sent by God. I don't choose my words. The Lord will help us. So there is a difference between one that is possessed and one that is what? Demonized. And just like I said in the teaching, there is a vast island on your soul. There's a vast island in your body. And those are capable, possible platforms to host demonic activity. All right. I began a list of platforms 
The first list of platforms is that your emotion is a platform. Your emotion. Have you ever seen someone that is rejection, rejected? Rejection is a symptom of demonic presence on the manipulating the emotion. Rejection, depression, and resentment. Now, in order for us to know that what I am teaching is practical life reality. Hallelujah. How many of you here have ever been depressed before? Okay. Now, those, the depression, rejection, I've seen a lady, there's nothing you tell her that will make her feel she's good. An exceptionally beautiful young lady. But demons have done terrible things on high motion. That she looks at herself in the mirror and wants to break the mirror. That's the result you find when the platform of the emotions have been invaded by demons. Two. We have the mind. We have unbelief. Have you found people, most of us are pastors, people that are finding it so difficult to believe you. It doesn't matter how skillful you are in the word of God. They don't believe. And it's a demonic situation. Because all doubt comes from your mind and all faith comes from your spirit. And what the devil wants to achieve is a battle between the mind and the spirit. So demons will amplify the position of the mind so that it's difficult for you to even believe God in the first place. Hallelujah. Unbelief is one of those symptoms. Confusion. Confusion. Have you ever found someone that is confused? Do you realize that a man can be anointed and confused at the same time? Confusion. Yes, I've seen many people. My anointed man, if you let him lose here, he, he can shake this place. But he doesn't know. It, that's all he knows, that shaking. He doesn't know what God wants him to do. He doesn't know where God is sending him. He doesn't know who to marry. And you see, he married one, then the person has, runs away. And then, that is... The only thing he has is that anointing. If he stands under the anointing, you know that God forgot something on his life. <laughs> but outside that anointing, meet him on the ground. There is no oppression of God that can help his daily navigation. He's confused. Are you with me? Stay with me. You must understand that as you are dealing with people, causes normally operate through decision-making processes. A curse on the life of a man will make him make choices that will ensnare him. Demons like the mind because that's the control room. And if you lose in your soul, you will lose on the ground. The devil knows that. So most of the time, demonic activity is mind-based. And then there's a third level. There's a third level. The first level is unbelief. Second level is confusion. And then the third level, you know, is insanity. All of those are reproaches on the mind by demonic activity. Number three, the tongue. Demons can also hang on your tongue. They are responsible. There's a spirit called lying spirit. If you are called into the prophetic ministry, I need to educate you this moment. Are you with me? Do you still remember what happened when the king was trying to find direction whether he should go for battle? And then prophets began to prophesy. You are going to conquer. You will subdue your enemies and all of that. The Bible didn't call them false prophets. It didn't call them soothsayers. It didn't call them people that had backslidden. They were prophets in every sense of the word. It was when Micaiah came that he showed us 
that you can prophesy from the investment of a spiritual gift and not being intimate with God. It is intimacy with God that is going to bring you into the visual environment from whence that prophecy came. So even in the prophetic, you will be able to discern that this stream is coming from a lying spirit. The prophets, they had, they had the mast that could pick things from the realm, but they didn't know the source. So their receptacle was active. And there was a, a transmission along the line of what they were pro prophesying. So they were not false prophets. It's just that because of a situation of lack of intimacy, all they had were transmitters. Meanwhile, in the visual environment, in the throne room, this Micaiah was given another experience. And in the experience that he was given, there was a spirit that came and offered to go forth and sell a lie to the king so that he would be killed in battle. It was only a prophet that was intimate with God that could enter into that visual environment. That visual environment is what we call the counsel of God. So there are few prophets that are admitted into that council so that they can hear what God has agreed and they can understand the workings of the protocol of the spirit and be able to discern and decipher which tributary carries the blessing of God. This prophet saw when the lion spirit came up and suggested to be released, to be given authority to go deceive the prophets. So this prophet had a higher perspective the other lower prophets were just prophets with living receptacles. So they were picking transmissions. Just like um, FM, Makodi FM, what's the 95.0? Huh? What of, I think we have to harvest. Joy FM is what? 96.5. Now, so a, a, an ordinary prophet is like a transistor radio. All it transmits are frequencies. But he doesn't know the source of the frequencies. But he is good at picking things that are being transmitted. So those guys picked some stuff. But they, they couldn't decipher that it was coming from the channel of a lying spirit. That's why a prophet can actually be a prophet of God. And what he picked in a service didn't come from God. Why? Because he's depending on his gift and not his intimacy. Yes. So many years ago, I had to pay the price of... One of the prices you will pay to be a good prophet is remain in the cave for long. Just like guys that work in the bank. The reason why they know wrong currency is because they've been counting the good one for long. If they touch the wrong... There's no way they can teach you fake currency. You will know it experientially. If you deal with the good ones for long, okay, bankers are shaking their heads now. If you deal with the good ones for long, you can always identify by touch. It doesn't feel the same. There's no way we can finish teaching you about God until you begin your own adventure of intimacy. There are things you will find. There are discernment levels that is occasioned upon your intercourse with God. You'll be able to discern some, some, some things flowing. We went to Benin Republic. I was invited to preach the gospel. And before I preached, our host now said there is a meeting, a prayer meeting that we're going to attend. I said, great, I like prayer. And then they brought four prophets. The first one started. Second one started. And third one started. And I touched my host. I said, are these the people you hear? Say, yes, these are the best here. None of them spoke from God. He said, I said, Mia, because of this situation, I will not lead prayer here. But this is what the Lord says. Then we left. All of them prophesied that the man's business 
is going to work. It will progress. It will prosper. Hallelujah. <laughs> With all in different ways, they say the same thing. After the prophecy, the government of that nation came to close that that that, that is business. <laughs> then he now cried out. Said, okay. In few days' time, they will open it. What those people did not see was that it was going to close. Huh? So they were busy prophesying. And it was not from God. So after the prophecy, the devils became angry and they closed. Then I now told him it will be reopened. He showed me the official documents of the closure. And I told him, Don't say the Lord, it shall be open. He also showed me the official document of the opening. Are you with me? I was a woman who was running a particular business. And she called me. She heard I was in that town. She called me that I should come and look at the place. Is it good? And people are saying that there is a cost on the ground. So I came there and said, well, based on my analysis, there is no cost here. If anybody did anything here that didn't work, it is because the person lacked managerial ability. Go and prosper. This land has been given unto you. I left the place. The moment I left, someone came and paid for it. Do you understand? I blessed the place for the woman so that she can now go and pay. Before she could go and pay, somebody came and paid. All paid for everything. 60 million. Then when she called me, I said, no, that's not what the law said. The, the law says it's yours. In 24 hours, the person that collected the money returned it to the, those people. Now that it is the woman's money you, you, she will collect. Prophecy is not coming to look at the environment and then mentally and calculate and say, okay, okay. Mean, median, and mode. <laughs> ah. I eco sila me calabo. If you don't like being with the Lord, you will be wrong very soon. Meanwhile, if anything involves my wife, my children, my pastor, I'm so close to, eh? I will be wrong because my emotions is affected. I will have to consult with another prophet. Do you understand that? Just to be safe. You are not with. Okay, leave it. Forget. <laughs> if your emotion has entered, forget about seeking God. You are wrong. Like one guy came here and was singing. Well, uh, what's this? that song again? This song that they like singing in that your place. <laughs> you know they like to they play me while you. <laughs> I like to. I can't wait to. Okay, yeah. Go for it, go for it. Pam, 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 pam. I like to walk out with you. Mm. To play me while you're. I like to. Hallelujah. Yes, one more time. Jesus. He was dancing and coming. dancing and coming. In fact, the way he danced, I had to join him too for some time. He now said, he has seen the damsel. I told him, this one you saw is wrong. 
these guys, they, <laughs> are you with me? The way you, you see the right one is, when you see the right one, you will not like her. It means your soul has not entered. It is only your spirit that is speaking it. If, if, if you have, the soul has entered, you are wrong. We are, you know, we are old in this matter. It was Elizabeth that said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit heart rejoice in the God of my salvation. If you know present tense, past tense, future tense, my soul doth present, my spirit heart past. The spirit had touched the thing before the soul was not touching it in the present. You, you just came, you, you have liked her. See, see the, the leg, see how the leg is. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> if you are going to be prophetic, keep your soul aside. And once your soul is in it, don't inquire anymore. Call somebody else. And say, can you help me check this? That's how we do it. Because you cannot always be accurate. You need to be sincere to yourself. If you are jack of all trade, master of all, you will, you will soon become false. Hallelujah. So we have a spirit called lying spirit. It hangs on the tongue. And as a preacher of the gospel, every six months you need to subject yourself to take some of your tapes at random and listen to it. You know why? What you are scanning for is for lying spirit. Because as a preacher of the gospel, most of what you release comes through your talking. Find out whether your tongue belongs to the Holy Ghost. Pick it at random. I'm talking, that's if you, if you want to last though. Pick it at random and listen. Listen to yourself. Okay? Okay. And then you will find out whether in this tape there are three lies. In this tape there are 17 lies. No, don't laugh. Don't. When you spot it, take a fast. <laughs> okay, you don't. Okay, let me leave you. Mm, even the most decent among us, you can be carrying the lying spirit. And if you don't deal with it, it will be with you till old age. I have seen. I have seen an older pastor that is old and respectable, but is very skillful in lying. Have you, have you seen that? Uh, so he, he, he protected the lying spirit until he became old. You know, a pregnancy you protect will grow. Instead of you to abort it, you kept protecting it. It's a guy, it's, oh, oh. In old age, he was still an expert liar. Because a lying spirit was taking advantage of his tongue. Hallelujah. We have a lying spirit. We have a spirit of criticisms. If you are pastoring, maybe you are pastoring a, a, a branch church, a church that someone had pastored, and then you are coming, they post you there, and then you are coming to take over. You need to do a lot of spiritual warfare if you are going to succeed. Because the first thing you need to expect is this terrible spirit called the spirit of criticism. Because the first thing that the spirit will do is to compare you with the person that left. You need to do a lot of spiritual warfare. There's another spirit called backbiting spirit. The person can celebrate you before you. And if you hear what the person said behind you, if you are not emotional, emotionally mature, you will swing into action. I don't have time to take you to all the scriptures where Paul was dealing with people in the congregation that were masters in Babati. He put all of that in a broad he heading. Evil speaking. Evil speaking. When you are beginning to get favor in some quarters, then someone now comes and he spoils you there. 
And then you just notice that people's attitude towards you had changed. Somebody had worked effectively. And his spirit helped the person. His spirit is involved. You know, many of us are not very ready for life. Because if you begin to make some form of progress, if you are someone that people can speak about and then you feel hot, you feel, go and sell ice cream. It's only the guy that sells ice cream that everybody likes. Everybody likes the ice cream man. <laughs> but in this work of the kingdom, demons will come. There are some things that will shake, will attempt to shake human be- demonic people. Oh! But you know what? If you keep your calm and you go through it, you will increase in rank. It was in this place. A preacher accused me of using charm to do miracles. In this city. And that lie sold for seven years. And God did not stop it. I got the lesson God was trying to teach me. That if I'm so concerned about what people say, I'm not going to go anywhere. I should, just like God is not concerned whether you hold him in the correct light or not. You know, many people have come and say, Lord, this prayer, I'm 36. Give me my husband or else. (laughs) That's a complete prayer package. People threaten God in the name of prayer. And you know what? He is never troubled. God is so he, the, the sense of his being, eh? he's so rich in the sense of his being. You know he existed in eternity without you and me, and he was fine. And the first time he had trouble was when he created our, our first fathers. That was the first time he experienced rejection in his history. The people that he just created so that he can, he can expose them to the circle of love that he's dwelling in felt that they said that Satan, the devil, had a better proposal than what their loving God was giving them. The first time God experienced rejection in his history was when we came upon the scene. So if God himself experienced rejection on the account of the devil, so what are you talking about? In fact, a bad, backbiting experience is not worth discussing. Because demons will train you to see if you are emotionally mature to handle the things that God is giving you. Say, oh, I, I ran away because they were talking. You are a baby. Talking what? Were you there when Jesus called me? Why, why true? Hallelujah. When the person talks, talks, talks and sees that you are not even paying attention, they will not say, wait, oh, we are not even achieving anything. They will cancel themselves to stop. <laughs> but then you would have gained rank. The way God responds to torture, to persecution, to all this kind of stuff, the way he does it is that he increases your authority. Yeah. You remember people like Peter? They used to arrest them and flog them at some point. How did God respond? Peter's shadow started healing the sick. So when he's coming, they'll just put sick people and then he'll be gisting. And then this one has, this one just stood up. He'll be, uh, uh, then they'll be gauging the shadow, gauging it. The, the thing won't go, the thing won't go. They, will. they are the ones aligning. How, how can you arrest such a man? He has gone beyond arrest. That was God's response to persecution. Oh, the church is being persecuted now. Wait and see the next five years. If we celebrated Benson Yahosa, you are going to see people with authority that no, they are beyond arrest. For five years. Watch it. Five years, watch it. So demons will move people to begin to talk. That's why I stopped wearing my wedding ring. Because they said they know my village. One lecturer in BS will say it's the same place we go for charm. It's the same place. 
that he he doesn't deny that he goes. He goes there. But it's <laughs> Oh God. If you are concerned about it, you are a baby because demons can move people through their vocal cord. And meanwhile, if your family, if there is anything suggestive of polygamy that happened in any of the generations, maybe your grandfather's time, there is a platform for evil speaking that is already created. If there is any situation that suggests competition, one of the ways by which people edge other people out is by evil speaking. And the precision with which these things work, you will know that it was guided by the agency of a spirit being. Are you with me? All right. Then we have the popular one. Demons can control people's sexual desires. Just in case you are here, born again, 15 years, 8 years, 9 years, but you are still a victim of masturbation, it is because your sexual desires are being manipulated. There's a certain young man those days that manipulated himself out of potency. He became impotent because of his use for ma masturbation. He masturbated himself into impotency. That's what I'm saying. Demons do that. When you find a lesbian. It was in this place I was teaching. And I was led by God to pick a lady. Say, see me in the office. Then she came. I sat down and said, how many people have you initiated into lesbianism? She said, fortunately for her, she has not initiated anybody yet. When did, when, when did you join them? She gave me the story. How many such lesbians are there in BSU? That's five years ago. She said, as at that time, there were 500. You are not aware that you are attending lectures with lesbians. Meanwhile, there is an advocation for preachers of our time to stop mentioning the word demon until everybody will be demonized. And it will be normal for people to be demonized. Are you in this hall and you have a fear on your soul that you cannot explain? Those are activities of demons. It's strange fear. It's baseless. There's no history to it. But it's there nonetheless. Because many people have questioned that if people are born again, you don't need, they don't need to be delivered. They have been delivered. You have not studied your Bible. Because the Bible says we shall be delivered. We have been delivered. Huh? So, shall is one. Have been is what is the present reality. And if you, if you are asking, okay, what have we been delivered from? Even your salvation is salvation from what? Salvation is salvation from what? From sin? You are wrong. Because the perspective of, are you with me? Of the justice system of heaven was that the soul that sinned shall die. The perspective of the justice system of heaven was that in the day that thou eatest of this fruit, you shall, in dying, ye shall surely die. So it means that death was upon us, a sentence of death. So salvation that Jesus brought, that's why Jesus had to die to secure it, is salvation from death. At least now you know you, you have been delivered from death. That's an established fact. Are you here? It's an established fact that you have been delivered from death. But there are still several levels of deliverance that you will need. And that's why the Bible says Christ is not only wisdom. Christ is not only sanctification. But Christ is also redemption. Because 
God is aware that you are going to sell off some of your rights to the devil. He's aware. So in Christ, there is the wisdom of how to redeem you from those little tradings and little transactions that seem to give the devil the authority to operate in your space. We are delivered and we shall be delivered. That's the position of the Bible. Are you with me? Another platform. So when you see things like masturbation, lesbianism, homosexuality. That's not the, the list still goes, goes on. Bestiality. When you find people's sexual desires manipulated. Demons are involved. And as you go for crusades and campaigns. You should be able to you should be able to discern the spirit that has kept the people in bondage. You must. Your intercession is so that you can discern. Don't go for any crusade that you have not discerned the people. Know what you are going to fight. Because a, a crusade can be an, an all-encompassing territorial answer. Are you with me? A crusade can be the solution to kidnap Huh? A crusade can be a solution to untimely death in a community. Oh, you yeah, are not with me. It, 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 it's, 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 a, it's, it encompasses vast allocation of kingdom resources. Yes, we know souls will be saved, people will be healed, but there is a deposit that is left on the territory. A true Ezemo is territorial. Ezemo, he knows what is why the river, why the river is drying up. Because the spirits walk with, walking with him want him to have territorial influence. That's how we are supposed to be. Not just existing in four walls. But we are priests of territories. We should know things about territories. We should be able to explain. This is why there's poverty. That kind of person that has territorial knowledge will never run out of relevance. But a normal, formal, pulpit pastor is fast running out of relevance. Now, at least let's 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 take Europe. Let's start from there. We are trying to be like Europe, but the pulpits are closing in Europe. The pulpits are closing in the West because there is an adaptation that is necessary for us to stay relevant, which people are not ready for. We must become territorial entities. It is when we become territorial, we will never go out of relevance. Never go out of relevance. So how did I know in Lafia? Don't go to the hotel. Go to the crusade. And we came and met. Nothing was working. Uh, I know this one. It answers to one hour prayer in tongues. Even if they are singing praise and worship. Because when we came, they were doing praise and worship. Meanwhile, they were, they were blind. To know that what is needed then is not praise. We are under attack. They couldn't see that there was an attack. They were still doing their thing based on the program. Demons are here and you are following your program. So while they were singing, we, we didn't even stand. We sat down where we were speaking in tongues. We, we looked strange. Hmm. Please tell your neighbor we are not preachers. We are messengers. Someone sent us. Hallelujah. Know what you are going to combat in the territory that you are going with a crusade body. A crusade can be the reason why prosperity will come to a land. A crusade can be the reason why the idols in the territory, the spirits can no longer function just because of the crusade. Beyond the normal things that happen, beyond the souls, beyond the miracles, beyond the healing, there's something that is left on the territory. If you are still with me, say amen. Demons are responsible for false religion. How many of you have been on Facebook since 
the last three years. I know most of us that are lead pastors, you may not try to find some time to we'll go on Facebook just to know what is wrong with your generation. One of those days when I got there, I just found somebody preaching. He said, Masturbation is not a sin. It's a work of the flesh. Hallelujah. No, you, you know, it's a, it's a gate of error, falsehood. So I couldn't see that caption and not comment. I now, I, I now profiled what he, he preached and what was missing. You know, sir? I had to show him this is what you are preaching. This, is, this terminology that you used here, you used it so that you can support this aspect. Meanwhile, the meaning of this terminology is this, 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 this. And what your message is lacking is one thing. It's called a cross. There are sev- seven things. If you take out of Christianity, it becomes a cult. A cross is one of them. Whereas the blood of Jesus deals with the things that we have done, the cross deals with who we are. So he has taken the cross out. So if, if I'm in masturbation, it's okay. Because no, no, no cross. So that's what the spirit of the age is trying to achieve to take the cross away from Christianity. It becomes a powerless cult. It becomes a personality cult. Because God will deal with you. The only son God has accepted as, as the pattern son is Jesus. It means your destiny for which God put you with the family put you, for which he gave you the calling you now have for which he allows you to pass through the troubles of your life, is so that you can be conformed to the image of his son. Because that is the pattern son that he has accepted. All of his sons that have his life must become like him. That's our destiny. When you remove the cross from that equation, that possibility is no longer in view. It means, come as you are. You can come as you are, but God has a protocol to transform you. Are you here? While I was worshiping today at home, God was now telling me what transformation means. Are you, are you, are you following? You know what the fall made you? It made you a self-centered entity. So your mind was configured to become self-centered. Your emotion was configured to become self-centered. Your will was configured to become self-centered. That's the mutation that took place. As transformation begins, because the cross is giving an opportunity to apply his verdict on your soul. Your soul that is self-centered is transformed and becomes selfless. Because Jesus' prayers were empty of self and full of God. You will never be full of God if you are self-centered. You can be anointed to a certain measure, but the anointing will bring you destruction. But when you become self-centered, you become what? Selfless. Then you can become full of God. When you go to pray, what motivates your prayer is not your condition, but it's the Lord's body. God can flash, can highlight his body upon your heart. That was how Jesus was. I can, if I had time, I would have profiled his prayer. Then you will see it was empty. Maybe when he was praying that prayer, I was hungry, but his hunger did not feature in the prayer. Maybe when he was in that place, he was lacking a sander, but he didn't fit up in the prayer. Is it wrong to pray for a sander? Is it wrong to pray for food? Is it not the scriptures that say, give us this day our daily bread? It's not wrong. Hallelujah. For the last time I visited church, all the prayers were self-centered, were full of self and empty of God. We didn't even give any time. Just okay, let's pray God, God's prayers. Haven't prayed about God. Let's pray God's prayers. As you grow in God, if you allow the Holy Spirit to determine all your prayers that you pray, you will find out that less and less you will pray for yourself. Not because he's careless and he doesn't care about you. Most of the times, the things you're about to pray up for, he has put it in the body of other people. That transformation is the migration from self-centeredness to God 
call center. It's a transformation. It's a different software. It's not an update of the same software. It's a migration to another platform entirely. It's only the cross that can orchestrate that kind of migration. And if you have somebody you are close to that has not experienced transformation, notice your sorrows will come from that person very shortly. For an entire space of three months, the only prayer that I could pray was to have mercy on me. Do you realize I, I didn't know why that was the only prayer I could pray? Do you realize it? Because what was responsible for concocting prayer in my life was beyond my wisdom. That was, that was the, that was the vibe that was coming from the Holy have mercy. Have mercy. And I prayed that prayer for three months without knowing why. Till this day. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. We can be leading prayers here, leading prayers here, leading prayers here. Somebody's leading prayer and we are praying along, praying along, praying along. And then one of the prayer points can stick to my spirit. As that person is leading prayer, I'm no longer following you. Because the, the idea of leading prayer is to help you gain ascendancy. It's not so that you pray the prayer. For instance, Jesus came and said, if you want to pray, pray like this, our Father who has in it. He didn't give us an enchantment. It's, it's a guide. <laughs> he said, after this man I pray, it's a guide to pray. So what the prayer leader is doing is guiding until the spirit of prayer takes over. When the spirit of prayer takes over, you may not need the guide anymore. You have touched it. And even when the guide now says, prayer time has ended, in your spirit that prayer can run for another seven days. False religion comes through the devils. You begin to see perverted inspiration. I am God. I am Christ. And he's preaching it not knowing it's an abomination. Because a gate of error has come. And a gate of error can make smart people foolish and abominable. Are responsible for false religion. Demons can also be responsible for sickness and disease. test I want to give you. An acid test by which you can identify someone that is being demonized. Matthew chapter 12 verse 43. Quickly. There are actually um, nine symptoms of demonic influence which I want us to skip when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none then he saith I will return into my home from whence I came out and when he is come he findeth it empty swept and garnished then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. I need to tell you something quickly as we read. The parameter by which demons are ranked is not their size. 
because you can find a demon that is very big but in ranking is very low the parameter by which demons are classified and ranked is their propensity their capacity for wickedness seven more spirits more wicked than what it says it means there's a skill of wickedness in the demonic realm and it is that skill that determines the rank of demons so he finds more wicked spirits to partner with him to ensure that that ground is secured and never lost again notice that of all the things that God gave us God ensured that demons will never have rest Exodus chapter 31 verse 17 quickly Exodus it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever for in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth and on the second day he rested and was refreshed. Every spirit is given an allocation for rest. Only demonic spirits are not. So if you are asking me for a golden world, that golden world will be restless. That's the golden world by which you can identify demonic activity. It's what? Restless. God rested on the seventh day and was refreshed. Every spirit is given an allocation of rest, including the spirit you have. You are not a spirit, but you have a spirit. And that spirit that you have, there is an allocation for rest for that spirit. Are you with me? All right, Isaiah 28. Are you there in Isaiah chapter 28? You need to allow your spirit rest. From verse 11 to 12. Isaiah 28, 11 to 12. For with the stammering of the lips and another tongue will he speak unto his people. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye shall cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they will not hear. Speaking in tongues is your own approach towards accessing that rest that is in the realm of God for your spirit. With the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue will I speak unto these people. He said, This is the rest. You remember the, the two words used in Exodus chapter 31? Rest and what? Refresh. God rested and God was refreshed. So you can also enter into the economy of rest and refreshing by speaking in tongues. But demonic spirits have no allocation for rest. So the golden word to know a man that is oppressed is what? Restless. And any time you notice you are becoming restless, it is time for you to do what? Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. The school fees issue is making you restless. Making you restless. Do what? Speak in tongues. He said with the stammering of the lips and with, with a new tongue. With a new tongue. Are you under pressure? Demons can take advantage of your pressure and begin to torment you and then you just realize you are no longer With the stammering, with the stammering. You need to stammer, you need to stammer. And then you are led into the economy of rest that is available in the grace of God. Hallelujah. some things and then tomorrow evening if God permits we'll move from persons to territories demonic activities in territories because
because in the morning we'll do two sessions so that you can see the source how demons enter demonic open doors what you what makes demons have control you need to check it and then how to expel demons then we'll now move to the territorial context when we move to the territorial context you will find the zigzag then when you leave this conference and go back to your village you will know where to look the point is the average believer is ignorant and the bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy this is the rest that he will cause his people to rest and this is what the refresh but they will not hear this is the rest this is the rest where wheat he will cause the weary to rest and this is what the refresh you know in trying to explain to us that a believer can be demonized i'm just showing you the the full scope of possibilities because i need to tell you what you need to do in order for you to be free of demonic influence i'm going to tell you that tomorrow morning and that's the life we're called to live in jesus and as you preach and teach that's your prescription because anybody that lives that way lives free of satanic influence whereas people's timings people's destiny people's opportunities can be manipulated such people that live that way are free from that possibility you will need to look for a message of mine because i'm not about to do what i did in that message here where i talked about the sources of supernatural power then we spoke about witchcraft what is witchcraft because the bible mentions it. my knowledge of witchcraft is not from a book it's from the bible I didn't read a book on witchcraft to know about, no, I read what? The Bible. Necromancy, the Bible speaks about it. Because, are you aware that Saul wanted to consult the spirit of Samuel? That's necromancy. Right, so we spoke about all those things. And then symptoms by which you can identify people that have practiced witchcraft before. Someone that is practicing necromancy actively, but coming to the church. There are signs by which you can know because spiritual things always litter signs. If we are going to be competent ministers of the New Testament, and Jesus said, If I by the finger of God cast out devils, then it means that the kingdom of God is come among you. Our competence in expelling demons and demonic influences is an indication of the fact that the kingdom of God has come. We are going to pray this night. If you come by nine, we are going to continue. It's a long day. If, even if we we'll go all the way, we we'll have to go all the way. Because there's a level of competence that we need to develop. There are demonic people coming to look for business with you. You need to know. And when you transact with them, it never goes, it never ends well. It's one of these crises, turbulence that you never prepared for. Transacting with them opens the door to demonic activity. But you know, when you are under pressure, never allow yourself to be restless. This is the rest. This is the refreshing. There are many of us in this congregation that came here restless. That's why you came. So that God can put a crown of peace upon you. He will not hide you in the tower forever. He will equip you and send you back to the same place you ran from. Because the, the last time we said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein. The average believer thinks that there is, there is a pavilion that is available for you to escape and hide. 
there is no accommodation there. He will equip you and send you back to the same battle that you came from. Please help me tell your neighbor, no retreat, no surrender. In the name of Jesus. You may rise on your feet as we pray. We are pressed for time. He said, with the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue will I speak unto these people. With the stammering of the lips, with a new tongue, I shall speak unto these people. This is the rest that I will cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. There is a rest in the spirit. There is a rest in the spirit. There is a rest. And I will cause the weary to rest. I will bring the famished to this place of refreshing. I will cause them to drink of the rivers of my pleasure. And they will be refreshed. Have you been under pressure, under torment? Nothing seems to be working around your life. There is a rest that the Lord brought you into this conference so that you may rest. This is the rest. With the stammering of the lips, with a new tongue, with a new tongue, He gives you a new tongue so that you can find rest. You can wiggle beyond the pressures that the demonic atmosphere has created and enter into a place where there is peace, where there is rest, where there is refreshing.
refuse to be restless. We refuse it. We refuse it. It is not our portion. God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. But the spirit of love. The spirit of power. And of a sound man. Confusion is not our portion. We ride above confusion. We enter into the realm of stability. 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 For with the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue will I speak unto these people. O Sai Compelli, Asin on the Hedelia Masakola. My Compelli, Sembo Combele, Amaco Patua. Siabokonda Sali, Mebokela, Mebokela, I take a Bokoli Masiga. Labosima. I say to the storm in your life, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Your father in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now there are so many cases that oh my those of you outside in the name of Jesus, they are high in spirit. They want to depart from restlessness as much as possible. With the stammering of the lips and with a new tongue will I speak unto this people. Hallelujah. Those of you outside, amen. So many issues here. But I want to teach first. Then we'll begin to minister from tomorrow evening. I want, I want you to be equipped. Because every one of us is going to be conscripted to become part of the functionaries. Yes, we, we, we are short in manpower. Jesus was looking for so much, but among a great multitude, you could only find 70. Not because he premeditated on 70, but because only 70 could go forth. We are trusting God that at the end of the capacity building, you become competent. You will know what to do. Then we can take responsibility. Even the demons that hold our nation at a standstill, and it's as if there's no cure to terrorism. Things are just running, just going. And then people in government will say, we condemn this, we condemn. Condemn kidnapping. Mm. We'll rise to the occasion. Yes.
that you see there is a demand for the warrior church already our generation have placed a demand based on circumstances and situation yes there's a demand for it god showed us many years ago that from the middle belt from plateau nasarawa all these areas the warrior church will rise in the midst of nigeria Because this happens to be the region that has been most politically marginalized. But a warrior church will rise. Yes. And then the yoke that hold us as a nation, it is through the warfare of the Middle Belt Church that has been oppressed that that yoke will break. Are you aware that the sons of the bond woman are the minority in Nasrallah State? They have never, never been able to determine their destiny. In terms of rulership. Are you with me? Our people have not been able to determine their destiny in terms of rulership. It means in that case, it is not number that determines it. There are powers involved. You see, we need to be schooled. We need to be trained to be able to engage. Because the prophetic church is born to reclaim territories in her ownership that was conceded to the enemy. And God will do a great work. Tonight I leave you with a parable. Make sure you are never restless. And just in case there's pressure. You can't think right. You can't pray right. Your appetite has gone. And you're hungry in limbo. The Bible says with a stammering of the lips and with a new tongue. I will speak unto these people. This is the rest wherein he shall cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshment. I salute you in the name of Jesus. You may be seated.